Hi everyone, welcome back to another lightsaber video. Um, today we're going to be looking at all the different versions of Luke Skywalker's uh, lightsaber from Return of the Jedi. As you can see in front of me here, I've got six different hilts, um, which are all canonically the, the exact same lightsaber, the green lightsaber that Luke uses in Return of the Jedi. And I'm just going to be um, answering the questions. Why are there so many different versions um, different props used throughout that one film. Uh, why, why did they need so many of them for different scenes? Um, where did each one come from? So just a little bit of a history and background of uh, the different props that were used um, for Luke Skywalker's uh, Return of the Jedi lightsaber. I did make a video like this about a year ago, and um, that video has over 4,000 views. It's crazy. Um, it's not really that I'm going to be adding much to that. So if you've already seen that video and you don't want to watch this, that's perfectly fine. Uh, it, it's not that there's any new information or anything. There, there, there are a few things that I've learned since then. It's just that I didn't have all six before. Last year, I, I think when I made the video, I think I had only about four of them. Uh, and now I have all six. So it'd be nice to kind of visualize what I was talking about before. Um, so without further ado, uh, yeah, why, why were there so many that were needed uh, for that one film? Um, so just to keep things as simple as possible, uh, for the original trilogy at least, um, every, every lightsaber came in, in broadly like two versions. There's a static version that is used as a belt hanger. Uh, it's often referred to as the hero. Um, and that is a usually a lightsaber that's kept on the, uh, the the actor's belt, or they might handle it from time to time for close-up shots, but it doesn't function. Um, and the other ones are designed and machined to look almost exactly like the hero version, but they're, they're FX versions, or rather they're stunt stunt lightsabers. So they would have things like blades. Um, which can be longer or shorter. Um, in A New Hope, they had, um, you know, motors and switches and battery packs uh, with wires running through the actor's kind of sleeve. Um, and those were, would be the ones that were used in the action scenes in any sort of duels or things like that. So stunt sabers and hero sabers. Um, now, these are a mixture of both. Um, but again, again, there seems to be quite a few. Why wasn't there just one hero and one stunt? Uh, so I'm going to try to answer that as best as I can. And to do that, we kind of have to go back to uh, A New Hope and talk a little bit about this one. This is Obi-Wan Kenobi's lightsaber from Star Wars A New Hope. And this is obviously a replica of um, his hero, Belt Hanger. So this was used by Obi-Wan as a belt hanger, and he had a couple of stunts that were designed to look like it. I don't have those stunts yet. I hope to acquire at least one of them in the future, but one of them is called the motorized stunt, or sometimes referred to as the death saber. And it was machined to look very much like this, um, but unlike this, which was made from real world parts, um, the other one was just machined um, by the prop department to look, so at the first glance, it would look a lot like this. So what happened is, um, after that film was done, um, I think this one was either stolen or lost or something, the main one, but the, the motorized versions or the FX versions uh, were, were left behind. And I think there's at least three of them. So they, they made this, what they did is they took this, and if you can imagine like almost like a, how you would cut a key. Um, so they trace this around in like a, a wooden block. Um, and that became known as the wooden wooden buck. And it's like the master for all the FX ones or all the stunt ones. And then they cast that into three different ones that Obi-Wan used um, in A New Hope. So there's gonna be at least three motorized versions or three stunt versions. Uh, two of those would eventually become two of Luke's lightsabers in Return of the Jedi. 
we're going to call them motorized stunt A and motorized stunt B, just for simplicity. So motorized stunt A for Obi-Wan would become this one. It is the exact same thing. So if you can imagine, uh, if you go back in time to A New Hope, the motorized stunt A for Obi-Wan look, would look almost identical to this. It would be much more black. So th these kind of chips came over time. It would be much more black. And you can see it's inspired by his main hilt. It, it, it was designed to kind of look like it with a graphics clamp and so on. Instead of this, it would have a bubble strip, just like so. And these two greeblies at the bottom um, were just like the wires and switches that I was referring to earlier for the battery pack so that Obi-Wan could operate his blade. So what they did was they basically just repurposed his motorized stunt to be Luke's main belt hanger for Return of the Jedi. And this is known as the V2. So at the onset of filming, they literally took Obi-Wan's motorized stunt A and they repurposed it to become uh, Luke's main belt hanger. And by repurposed, all, all they did was they changed the bubble strip to a circuit card. Um, there was no need anymore for like wires and switches. So they plugged the hole with these two Greeblies and that's pretty much it. They got rid of the blade because the technology had changed as well. And this would be a belt hanger anyway. And that's it. That's how the V2 was born. Now the V2 is what you see in 90% of the film. Um, in most close-up shots, uh, what you're seeing is the V2. Anytime it's hung on his belt, it's the V2. Pretty much always. Um, you can also see it very clearly um, when he surrenders to Darth Vader uh, in Endor. Uh, when the officer hands it to Darth Vader, he says uh, he, was, he, he, he was armed only with this. And then throughout that whole conversation, Darth Vader has this in his hand when he gives it to the Emperor. The Emperor has it next to him on the throne, etc. All this time, it's the V2. So that was the main belt hanger. So we'll put that to the side. So that's the first one done. So again, motorized stunt A from Obi-Wan became uh, the V2, which is the main belt hanger. What about the motorized stunt B? Well, that one, which was cast again from the same master, became this, it became the V3. So you can see they also look similar, but they're not identical. Because they were cast from the same master, they are very, very similar, but they're not identical. So the V3 would become Luke's stunt. So that would be the hero. V2 is a hero. V3 is a stunt. So the stunt would have a long blade so that he can duel Darth Vader at the end. And you have to ignore, it, it didn't look like this during filming. It, it was obviously designed to look very similar to the V2. So it'd be much more kind of brown and black. There wouldn't be any of this chrome tape. Um, this clamp card wouldn't look like that. It would look a bit more like this, like a standard Graflex clamp card. Um, but otherwise, it, it was the same as this. So the main difference, really, how you could tell them apart, is this one has a long curved lever. This one has a standard Graflex lever. So yeah, that one was a hero, and this one was a, the dueling stunt, the v V2 and V3. And you would think, well, that should be enough, really, for the whole film. You've got a, a hero for his belt hanger. You've got a stunt for his uh, duel with Darth Vader. But then what happened is they, I think they needed another stunt saber for Luke to fight the bad guys uh, on the skiff uh, early on in the movie at, at Jabba's palace, which um, I think it just couldn't have been this for whatever reason, maybe because it has a very long blade. Uh, so they created, this time they machined one from scratch because you know, they've already used up both of Obi-Wan's stunt sabers. So they, need, they machined one from scratch to look like them. And what they machined was this. This is known as the Yuma. So again, it looks a lot like the other two. It's meant to look like the V2, V3. Same sort of paint job. Grenade section. You know, a, a sort of a false 
what looks like a Graflex clamp here. But this is all machined from scratch. That's what the prop department did. They just, they just made this. And this would have a shorter blade, something like this. And that allows Luke to kind of swing his lightsaber without injuring anyone because there's lots of bad guys around on the skiff, lots of actors, lots of extras. Um, so I think that's the reason that this was created, was because that was primarily, it had a longer blade, and I I'm not sure how it works exactly, but that one was used in the duo, and that one was used on the skiff. Now, during production, remember, during filming, these all looked very, very similar. So it, you'd have a very hard time to tell one from the other unless you paused the scene and kind of really looked for like different tells. Uh, in in post-production, these were changed. I will talk a little bit about that later, about why that looks so different now. So again, yeah, th those are the three, and those are really the three sabers that you see in Return of Jedi. You do not really see any other hilts. Um, V2, V3, and Yuma. Until filming is done, at least. Now, what happened is... Um, yeah, be before I move on to post, there was also... They, they created resin copies of the V3. So the V3, which is a stunt saber, they made multiple resin copies. And this is one of them. And so this kind of gives us an idea of how the V3 looked during production. You can see here it had a standard clamp card. The Graflex lever, the holes in the clamp. You can easily see that this was based on the V3. And I've talked about this in detail before. This is the resin prop that was fired up from R2-D2's dome. And there's a couple of other resin for like action shots. Uh, these are more like gag sabers. They're, they're not even stunt sabers because they're just used for like one quick scene. So yeah, the, the resin copy of the V3. So V2, V3, and Yuma. Now filming has wrapped, everything's finished. And now they move on to the editing stage. And in the editing stage, they do, you know, they do add insert shots, um, pick up scenes and so on, just to kind of enhance the final cut of the movie. And I think they, what they did is they noticed that in that scene uh, with Darth Vader, he's holding this in his hand and he says, I see you have constructed a new lightsaber. Now this does not look like a new lightsaber at all, does it? It looks really, really beaten. I mean, this was from 1977. It was a stunt saber for Obi-Wan. It's, it looked beat up. It's, it just doesn't look new. It doesn't look convincing for him to be saying that line. But they didn't change the whole scene. They literally just changed it for that one shot where he's holding it in his hand and turning it. And this one was born. This is the ICU have constructed a new lightsaber. Where did this even come from? Well, it came from the Yuma. It is exactly the Yuma. It's just evolved into this. Literally, all they did was they cleaned it up, painted the neck, cleaned it up there, and they literally just added this on the control box. They added a pair of brass rails and this control box card with these horizontal tracks. Just to make it look brand new but it is the same saber. This comes from the Yuma. So that has a different lineage to these other ones. These all come from Obi-Wan sabers. This is created from scratch. And this was the second kind of evolution of, of this one. And it was used for that pickup scene alone. Then they, there was another pickup scene where Luke is sitting in a, in a cave on Tatooine and actually doing the construction of the lightsaber. Um, and for that, they again took this and they modified it a little bit more. So they uh, hollowed out the box, they added some electronics in it, a simple circuit board, a, uh, a switch, and a couple of um, LEDs here, a red and a green one. And uh, Mark Hamill would fiddle with it, they would light up, 
and then he'd light, light the, the saber for the first time. That scene was ultimately deleted. It didn't make it into Return of the Jedi, but it appeared as a bonus deleted scene on the 2011 Blu-ray. And it's called the deleted cave scene. It's very famous. And this is what it looks like. As you can see, once again, it looks nearly identical to the IC of constructed new, new lightsaber in every way, other than some details here on the box. The red and green arrows, the extra step here, the ability to slide the card up and reveal that circuit board and switch. And that was the only difference. So this is the third kind of generation or the third step in the evolution of the Yuma. So all of these are the exact same hilt, just in different, um, yeah, at, at different times of, of production. This was during filming on the skiff. This is ICU of constructing a new lightsaber. That's the cave scene. And this, which is ironic because this is the most well-known one, and it's not even in the film at all, it's just in that deleted scene, but it's the most well-known version of Luke's saber. And that's because this was taken by Lucasfilm to be Luke's, Luke's kind of official lightsaber. So in years to come, this would go on tours, exhibitions, uh, it would be taken by Master Replicas and other official license toy makers. So all replicas and toys from that day would be based around this one. You can see it in video games and comic books, etc. That's why most people, when they think of Luke's green lightsaber, they think about this one. Although it never actually made it to the film. So these are one lineage, and these are another lineage. So that's why there are six of these in front of me. Um, as I said, there's at least one more resin copy. Um, but I think that's about it. So once again, all of this kind of can be traced back to Obi-Wan Kenobi's A New Hope lightsaber. This was, there were stunt copies or stunt versions of this. Um, the wooden buck was created, they were cast, two castings were made, V2 and V3, resin copies of the V3 for action scenes, then the Yuma was machined from brand new to look like these two, and that kind of evolved into the ones for the pickup scenes and insert shots. So post-production, after filming was done, we really just have this one. That's the only one that exists, the, the V1 hero, and the V3 and the V2. V2, I think, was sold to a private collector, I believe, and that's how it looks today. The V3 and the V1, the, 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 the hero, would go on to tours and exhibitions, and that's why the V3 looks like it does now. It's changed. Remember, it used to look a bit more like that. But now it looks a bit more like the hero. Because they realize that, well, if they're sending these two to exhibitions and tours, they need to look the same. Um, so they, well, all they did was just paint the neck. And they added a control box card or a clamp card to look a little bit similar to this, etc. Just cleaned it up. By cleaning it up, they literally just taped over some of these parts with chrome tape and so on. And that's why it looks like that today. It made it look like the Hero, where originally it looked a bit more like the V2. So these are the only three Luke lightsabers that exist today in post-production. V2, V3, and V1 Hero. But prior to that, during filming, it really was V2, V3 and Yuma, pretty much. Short bladed stunt, dueling stunt, and belt hanger. I think that's everything I want to say about these. I hope it wasn't too confusing. Um, you know, this, this prop is really, really interesting. And, uh, you know, obviously Luke's car was my favorite 
character so I really wanted to kind of collect the whole uh, lineup of all his different lightsaber props so yeah that's it any questions feel free to drop a comment below um, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one